Great. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, just so much information was, was provided. I, I appreciate all that you had there. And, and uh, I just want to take just a couple moments. Uh, we've got a whole slew of questions. And, and just like what Ned was saying, what we're going to do is we'll go through like a couple quick questions here. But the rest of the questions, uh, we will present that to our two speakers. They will provide some answers to those questions. And they will be uh, posted with the recording so that you could download the, the response to that. But, but there's a couple, a couple questions that uh, I, I just thought I would, would uh, uh, ask. Uh, and you kind of alluded to it there towards the end is, then, then, you know, if, if, if this is such an issue with PFAS, PFOAP, and, and all those, these products, why do we still have them? And what, where we continue to use those products? Well, you know, it's, it's uh, the products include all the clothes that you're wearing that are stain resistant, the carpets you have in your home that are stain and water resistant, your cookware in your kitchen that are stained. So even if today we said we're not selling any more PFAS containing products, you still have long lasting products that you're probably not ready to get rid of them all because it would be a lot, your whole closet probably, um, all your flooring. Uh, that's just a start. So that's just, you know, they're just so pervasive. They brought us such convenience in life and we've taken that for granted and meanwhile no one realized the problems that they are and if we didn't have a lot of direct discharges to the environment through um, firefighting training um, release of aqueous film forming foams in very large volumes and direct industrial input into the air or into our streams we and an improper you know disposal of industrial waste we probably wouldn't be where we are just from domestic products right but this is where we are all right, very good. Uh, just two more quick questions. Uh, one is, are PFAS-associated uh, products, uh, are, can they be found or are they found in bulk packaging uh, that's used like fruits, vegetables, meats? Uh, you, you talked about it being in some of the like fast food containers. Or what about some of your, like in the grocery store packaging, some of those types of things? Honestly, sure. it's probably in most all your packaging. It's just how much of it from the packaging is leaching into the food. And you will ask, why is this still being allowed? And this is because we have different regulatory entities in the, in the U.S. Should FDA step in right away and say no more PFAS in food packaging? Absolutely. But they're not yet. <laughs> Okay, um, and, and then uh, are, and I think you alluded to this a little bit earlier, are pesticides a source of PFAS on the farm, uh, in, in, in farming operations? They can be for three reasons. They can be as part of the carrier. We've now learned that most likely in most cases it's actually part, it's actually become contaminated through the container that it's sold in because those containers have coatings of PFAS, which again, it keeps the pesticide from, you know, leaking out of the plastic bottle. You know, they're just really amazing chemicals. And unfortunately, what's amazing about them is what makes them so persistent in the environment. So um, both of those things. And then there are some that, um, you know, and a lot of these hopefully are being phased out uh, that were actually the active ingredients um, in, in a pesticide. But for most agricultural operations, I would say it could be in the carrier because they're great surfactants. And you guys know you, you know, you have the surfactant carrier for your pesticide or they're coming from the bottles that the pesticides are in. It doesn't mean that's every pesticide bottle, right, um, every source. Um, but, yeah, that's where you're going to get them when it's associated with pesticides. Okay. And, and one then of the, the challenges, the, the, oh, I'll just oh. add to that, that one of the challenges is that, that these are commercial products with you know, that are proprietary, and uh, so it's difficult. To, it's been difficult to get information. So a lot of this is, by, is sleuthing and and testing materials by researchers rather than trying to get, uh, you know, because it's impossible to get disclosures of exactly where these have been used or are used. Yeah. So, so you would not find that on, on the labels that no, are coated with PFAS <laughs> or anything like that? Correct. It would They're be part of the inert ingredients. ingredients. Yeah. <laughs> inactive or inert Oh, in, inert. Okay. So inert, and that, maybe that's, that's a and flag it'll force. Percent, right? It'll have a percent of inert ingredient, and it will only have the ones, if it does list, a, list anything, it'll have the ones that are of major, a major percent. But just for an example, aqueous film forming foams that have PFAS in them because they can make fire, hydrocarbon fires be extinguished to meet military specs, only has typically, you know, the whole formulation is 
as a 3% dilution and within that formulation, you have very, very little PFAS compared to all the other constituents, but they are the constituents that do the work. So they're not even considered as a major portion on a percent scale, so no reason to list them in ingredients. 